Facebook.com and listen on. Don't be afraid to catch fish. Relax Radio. Welcome back to the show. This is me, Nick, and we got Laura on board as well, keeping you guys company all the way until 6 p.m. What's happening, Laura? Uh, not too much, actually. I'm good. I'm great. It's Friday. I can't complain. My, fa- my favorite day in the week, so it's all good. How are you I doing? Know. I mean, it's, it's, been a, it's been a definitely crazy, crazy week so far, you know, with all that's going on. Yep, 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 yep. I mean, it, it, wait, it's a Friday. It no, is. It is. The weekend is just here. Yep, it's a Friday. Although the weekend July is very short, but, you know. I mean, yeah, it is. It is what it is. What's your plans for the weekend? Um, I'll probably be taking my my parents out. They just okay. they're in the UK now, so they're on vacation. Uh, probably just take them out a few sightseeing. I don't know. Take them to the zoo, maybe <laughs> see a few animals. <laughs> take them shopping. I really don't know. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you know, these are things that we don't really realize. I mean, take them to the park or something. That would be nice. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. The weather's <laughs> too hot for the park right now, so. <laughs> I mean, it's great, you know, to see the, how the restrictions are getting, you know, easier, and then you can go out with your family and stuff like that. At least, you know, you can reconnect again. I mean, on an outward setting, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, I'm just, I really can't wait for everything to be over, especially the face masks, because see, I just can't deal with these things. I can <laughs> I imagine. Can't no, yeah, it just doesn't work for me, Paul. It's all good. I mean, hey, that's just, you know, how it is. But there has been a lot of interesting things that's been happening right now in the UK, in case you were wondering. And uh, yeah, there is the National Food Strategy. Yeah, they want to touch our foods. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, they already remember- started. <laughs> Remember when we we read the story about the government saying they want to tackle obesity, especially in children, yeah. Uh, yeah. by banning you know um, adverts, junk food adverts, and Actually. making it yeah, just giving it a curfew for nine pm, and that's was starting like twenty twenty three or so, I think. Um, yeah. So when I got the news, I wasn't exactly, I wasn't particularly surprised because I'm like, okay, I'm pretty sure it's also in the line of tackling obesity and all of that. And now they're saying that um, they want to make it so each family only spends about two hundred and forty pounds a year, you know, okay, yeah. on sugary, yeah. yeah, on sugary foods and all of that. It's not going to, it's not going to sit well with a lot of children. Let's just start by saying that. And um, a lot of households, but I, I really don't know what they're thinking. And um, I don't know. I don't know. What do you think? I mean, look, my thing is like, why touch our food? I mean, yes, <laughs> you want us to get healthy and all, but why touch our food? There, it's like you know. I feel like that's the last straw. You should not touch our food. The food is what you know what we decide. I feel like that's the only freedom that we have. What we eat. Um. I, I really don't know their like, in-depth plan, but I think that there are probably better ways to handle this obesity problem. You know, for example, um, why not just upgrade the education on you know, healthy yeah. living and healthy diets in schools? You know, get more um, nutritionists and dietists, uh, dietitians and all of that. Get them to have extra sessions with these kids. Um, make more what you call it now, make more, I don't know, more creative stuff that children will be attracted to, you know, and then rather than seeing um, sugary foods and sodas and stuff, let them see more asparagus and more broccoli and more, you know, (laughs) cabbage and all the veggies. I think think right now what we should do is make this junk food taste better. Uh, It tastes less better. Sorry, my bad. (laughs) Make it taste less better. Then people will be unattracted to go for this. Like they should remove these uh, additives, I think. Uh, I feel like I that's know. something that we could start to discourage people from eating. I mean, if you want to really tackle this. Yeah. I feel like rather than make it taste less better, how about we make it um, not More too expensive? sweet. No, no, no. <laughs> not too <laughs> sweet, but kind of um, add more healthy, healthier options when making some stuff. Like you see some foods that you eat. It's not necessarily too much sugar, but it's sweet, but not too sweet that you know there is still a lot of healthy benefits in that meal you know you're talking about the calorie yeah calorie wise you know so rather than tax 
um, people and say, if you want to get sweets and all of that, you have to pay some money. Like besides yeah. the money, they're going to have to buy it. For me, yeah. it's just like you said, it's, you're taking away our freedom. You're kind of making us into this um, non-diplomatic government. You're taking away our free will to buy whatever yeah, we I mean, want. Think about it, Laura. It's, I, I've watched this movie, right? They, they say there's a dialogue. I can't remember which movie that was, but it's a really old movie. So this guy says, the day they touch our food is the day we lose our freedom. T trust me, I am a foodie, as you guys probably know already. <laughs> I mean, so, you and me both, sister. You and me both. <laughs> I, I understand where you're, when um, obesity is a, is a big concern, you know, but someone coming to determine what and what I I eat, I feel like that's that's supposed to be my choice, and I'm an, an yeah. adult, you know, but for children, leave that to their parents, you know. Definitely. You can, you can have, like, seminars, I don't know, just invite parents or pass a message across to every home. However you want to do, I really don't know. But children won't just go to the kitchen and pick up whatever they want. That's right. You know, it, the parents give these kids these things. And I know that they eat a lot outside. So if you can pass a message across to parents to um, kind of have a bit more grip on the kind of freedom they give their kids to just eat whatever you want, you know, yeah. then that that's going to be better than just saying, um, yeah, no more sweets, no more candies. Right. You've got to pay a certain amount of money for tax on it. Like, look, hmm. listen, I'll tell you something, Laura, about this generally, right? When you think about it, I'm just going to talk about this broadly. So when it comes to, let, let's say food is, uh, is uh, you know, you, there are people who are addicted to food, like, you know, who like to eat, like yeah. like us, right? So let's say, you know, a smoker, no matter how much expensive you make the cigarettes, they're still going to smoke. No matter how expensive you make alcohol, they're still going to drink it. No matter how expensive you make the food, junk food, whatever, people are still going to eat it. They don't really care. Yeah. If they want to eat it, they'll eat it. So people will still like find a way. way. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, you're absolutely right. Like people will find a way to go around it. It's like, oh, you think you can stop us, right? No, yeah, uh, you know, this is what we're gonna do. And, then, yeah. and in the end, you, you get tired because it's like, okay, what else? We run out of options, you know. So I think the best way really is to find another way to um, go about it than taxing. You know, I get yes, obesity has become quite a grave concern in the country. And um, I, don't, I, don't I mean, know. it's something that we have to tackle. Look, this is what they say right now. Okay, I quote England's national fruit food strategy also wants GPs to try prescribing fruit and vegetables to encourage healthy eating. I mean, this is what doctors have always been doing. Okay, this yes. is what doctors have always been doing. If you're diabetic, if you're obese, they tell you, they're always telling you this. We don't need doctors to be telling this is again and again. We know what, mm -hmm. what is wrong. I yeah. mean, if we want to make the choice of what is bad, I mean, it's our choice. I feel like, okay, I'm, I mean, I mean, yes, I'm not talking about, you know, the other things. I mean, when it comes down to food, yes. When it's unhealthy, when it's too much, I understand, like, you know, you're supposed to limit yourself. But these are things that the government doesn't really necessarily have to put their finger into. These mm -hmm. are choices. These are life choices, lifestyle choices. Yeah. Um, I mean, I feel like we don't have to wait until it's a life-threatening situation where the doctors are like, okay, you need to lose weight now or you're going to die, you know. But if we're really tackling childhood obesity, then you should be targeting parents. Facts. Because, yeah, in the end, I mean, children, what else? You go to you go to school, right? Your parents probably pack you a lunchbox or maybe you eat food at school i don't know if they eat free food at school then they need to walk up to the school and find out their you know meal plan what do they eat do you, what do you give them replace sodas with water or you know you know there's some like some squash you know some kind of um sweet drinks that are not exactly fizzy and they don't they don't you didn't use like nine cubes of sugar when they were making that drink you know it's probably like a single calorie so they can replace that with squash or water so yeah. just so kids can have something sweet but if the parents give them lunch boxes you know yeah i don't know reach out find out ugh, just reach out to the parents but coming to tax the whole country i i just feel <laughs> that unfair, might, yeah yeah and it might actually cause an inflation in prices in shops because let's be let's be real most about should i say 90 percent of food stuff are made of you know from sugary sugary foods 
That's true. Even fruits, true. even some fruits, you know. Yeah. So if if you're even saying fruits, uh, every fruits, fructose, I'm sorry to interrupt you right there, yeah. but you know fruits, right? It's essentially fructose. So fructose is a sugar. It is more mm -hmm. sweet than sugar. Sugar is sucrose. So all right, yeah. I'm talking about chemicals here. I'm telling you, yeah, the fruits are more sugary than sugar. That's how much sugar. I mean, yes, it's healthy sugar, but still. You yeah, know, more fruits are still gonna make you sick. Also, so I really absolutely. don't understand the government's approach on this. Yeah, absolutely. It's just like someone saying you want to lose weight, and then you your your favorite fruit is banana. You're never gonna get there. I mean, it's not going to work like that, you know, because banana alone has a lot, a lot of calories, you know, in a single banana. So if you're saying, oh, you just want to snack on that, and feel like it's gonna help you with your weight loss, then, mm, honey, it doesn't. It's just nah. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, a lot of these food stuffs and food item in stores are made from from sugar, down to That's bread, true. down to bread. So really, it's going to affect a lot of things, and shop owners will not be happy, um, inflating their prices. Yeah, because people are not going to want to shop there anymore. Say, oh, your 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 bread went from I don't know ninety p to a, a pound fifty now. Oh, I'm not buying that anymore. And then they know when their price, when their customers stop coming, and when they're ratings go low so it's um yeah it's just going to be a chain of like a ripple of more ripple effects that's not going yeah, to that's be true. i mean yeah, uh, that's true i mean look for me my biggest problem my biggest problem with this whole strategy right they're saying okay they're going to increase the taxes on you know you know these food you know these unhealthy foods and all of that yeah they're going to increase taxes on sugar salt and they're saying okay we're going to prescribe vegetables right Okay, hear me out, Laura. The funny thing, this is the crux of the, the whole the, the whole joke of this whole thing. Vegetables are more expensive than junk food. True. Vegetables are more yeah. expensive than junk food. If you yeah. really want to encourage people to eat more healthy, why not make that cheaper? Why not? Uh, you know, I actually had this conversation with somebody and I, I, we're just talking about the fact that if I want to, okay, say I want to eat healthy, right? And I want to go out and yeah. get lettuce or yes. you know spinach one bag of spinach the last time i checked was a pound something yeah but if i if i see like custard cream biscuits yeah 50p that's half the price of a bag of spinach right and i'm not just going to eat spinach i'm not a goat because i'm going to have to <laughs> buy other vegetables to you know make a proper meal so yeah. spinach alone is a pound 50 maybe i've got like what three quid to spend on shopping that day yeah, Fine. i want to get some mushrooms i want to get something mushrooms is about a pound so two pounds down the line you know but i go and get custard cream i get some chocolate biscuits that is probably like i don't know 80p 90p i've gotten yeah. like three bags of you know sweet stuff compared to just two the spinach and the mushroom of which I still need to get some other stuff, maybe chicken, maybe yeah. fish, you know. But all these things are more expensive than the the, the junk food. So why? Who am I kidding? Why not just go for the junk? At least yeah. I can eat that for. Yeah, it's and cheaper, and then it's make you yeah. full. I'm I fat. Mean, <laughs> <laughs> what? Yes, <laughs> what? I mean that's makes the truth. Full. That is the truth. I mean, look for me. My thing is when you want, let's say you want to buy biscuits or you want to buy even meat in general, right? Or you want to buy this burger. Let's say a burger costs, uh, you know, two pounds or one pound. Let's say one pound. The vegetables to make this whole salad or whatever Caesar salad or whatever a meal, a proper meal will cost you at least two or three pounds at least. So obviously, it's a cheaper alternative to go for that burger because it's cheaper, it, and it feels it feels. Yeah. Like, and also let's be let's be real this is um also something that a lot of us avoid discussing it's the lazier choice <laughs> because no it's it's the truth let's be yeah, real it's the truth it's the, it's the, truth. the truth a lot of people don't know how to cook I'm and a lot of people don't like cooking a lot of people don't have the time to cook so a lot of factors come into i mean if i'm thinking oh gosh i've got to bring out the pan and i've got to wash the pan i've got to put it on the stove and then i've got to get my oil and then i've got to watch a video on youtube probably to know how to cook nah I think I'll just go and get some ice cream you know it's it's really the lazier choice as well because nobody has time you know you you want to spend more time making money than thinking of what healthy stuff to get so a lot of people run to like um fast food takeouts where they're supposed to um sell like healthy meals <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of calories
is a lot of stuff. You you think you're buying chicken, right? You want to yeah. take, I don't know, guilty KFC, get some chicken. You don't realize that the chicken is deep fried. Yeah. Which usually takes like 40 calories just for oh. a piece of chicken because it's deep fried compared to grilling your chicken. So <laughs> in the end, you are still taking a lot of chunk. Um, yeah, so we can go on and on and on, but it's I, I don't know if this is the way to tackle this situation. It's a good incentive, yeah. you know, it's a good initiative, but the process or the method they're going by about it, I, I just I don't That's agree a hundred percent. Look at this, Laura. I'm gonna tell you a fact right now. I don't know if you're familiar with the company Beyond Meat. Beyond Meat. Yeah. So this is a company, right? Sure. They are providing, you know, burgers that is completely 100% meat free. You know, you don't get, if you're a vegetarian, you can enjoy the same benefits of a person eating a burger. All okay. Right? So I'm telling you that, I, I don't know if you've tried it. I've tried it. Okay. So they, they've tried these burgers that taste exactly the same how a burger would taste. Okay. And my argument, they're saying, oh, it's a healthier option, but then they don't realize we deep fry. You know, it reminded me of what you're saying right now. We deep fry. We do all of these things. I, I want to know. You know, the government yeah. is talking about all these healthier choices and all. For me, this is this is this is very troubling. Like like I said, when they put their fingers in our food, it it feels like it's a little too much. It's I mean, yeah. yeah. Um, I think really what they should be focusing on is encouraging more people to cook their food, and you know, do less of buying outside i know it sounds a bit harsh because a lot of businesses are going to suffer when they have less and less customers you know but it's for me i don't really particularly i hardly buy you know take out i mean i i started doing it a bit more often and i'm trying to cut down a lot because it's not healthy you know and uh, if you actually see the process when they make these things there's a lot of dipping it in flour which is fattening there's a lot of deep frying and yeah. sometimes they deep fry it twice. So <laughs> imagine all the oil you're consuming and, oh yeah, I'm eating healthy, I'm eating a piece of chicken. You're not, you're eating a lot of fat, actually. That is true, that is so, true. And yeah, deep, deep frying. Like, deep I'm frying. I'm gonna interrupt you right there. Deep frying, right? That oil, I've, I've studied science, right? And I don't know, you've studied science too, you must know this. Yeah. So oil, right? You use it one time, it becomes mm -hmm. something else. It becomes a different kind of oil. And uh, it's uh, saturated oil. It becomes saturated oil. Right? Yeah, yeah. So that oil, you use it again. Again. And again. And <laughs> again. And again. That same oil. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, you're, you're telling me you're not going to get fat. Definitely. And and, and all these um, um, restaurants of, or takeouts, they don't just fry one time and throw the oil away. I mean, come on. No, they <laughs> never, ever. They use it for like five, five, ten batches. So yours is probably like the True. fifth the fifth batch that they're making after Even the they batch. <laughs> deep fried all the others and you're coming out, oh, yeah, I'm eating healthy. Mm -hmm. You know, and even home, because I've got an air fryer, right? And I do most of my, my meat, my chicken. I, I air fry it. I either air fry or I roast in the air fryer, which yeah. you won't believe the amount of oil that comes out of chicken. Like yeah. raw yeah. chicken, you know, yeah. so it's a lot of oil. Then you now take all the oil and still put it in oil to fry. It's just, um, yeah, I think I mean, the government should be encouraging more people to, you know, cook their foods at home rather yeah. than depending outside. Because during the weekend, I don't know if you've noticed, Nick, but yeah. have you actually gone outside during the weekend to see the queue and the line oh, of yeah. cars waiting at a fast food, you know, takeout? I'm terrible. like, very don't you guys cook? Like, <laughs> I don't cook every day. Don't get me wrong. I don't. I don't have that time because I work as well. But, but this is the thing you know. You know. At that end of the day, you know if you really need food and if you can't buy it, you're gonna cook it. Exactly. You, you at least have that confidence. I mean, like, I don't want to insult anyone, but your mama taught you about those things. You know, okay, you have to survive on your own. Well, you have to know how to cook for yourself. Yeah. At least survive. Let, let me be honest. Let me be honest here. I've never always liked cooking. As a matter of fact, when I was in my teenage years, because I've got an elder sister, right? So yeah. she's the firstborn, so she's got pretty much all the responsibilities. I, I was just, I was just chilling. Elder you sister, know? if you're listening, you're listening. <laughs> Laura is guilty right here. She, she hated it. She hated the fact that I would just be you know with my younger brother i would just be playing video games she'd be in the kitchen my mom would always call her first you know 
because she was always grooming her as a firstborn and all of that. She hated that part. But I just started picking up cooking, you know, um, when I was in my 20s and stuff. Because I went to university where we're not allowed to cook and all of that stuff, you know. So I just started picking it up late. So it's it's never actually too late to learn. And it begs me to ask, how exactly do people cope during the first lockdown? Because last I checked, <laughs> yeah, all the fast foods were closed. So how do people true, survive? True, true. True. How did you guys survive if you don't know how to cook? I if, love if how you just brought God that up. Forbid, right? That's a fact. <laughs> if God forbid there's another wave now, Nick, are, are people going to starve to death? I think they must have just boiled everything and just eaten it on fried oh. everything and just eaten it. Oh, I, 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 I've seen videos where people <laughs> like. <laughs> I've seen a video right of a person cooking rice. Uh, I don't know. Have you watched this video by Uncle Roger? And he makes this video. This is a YouTuber, right? He makes uh, like he, he he criticizes people on their cooking. So this one girl, I think one girl from uh, I don't remember where, one show, right in UK. Right. So she 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 uses rice, and what she does is it's it's crazy. She uses coriander, and generally you don't use coriander at all. A coriander is like that thing, like a big strainer where you right. strain the rice water, and it's 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 such a big, complicated method. And he's like, "Okay, look, this is the problem. People don't know how to cook rice. A simple rice. I can tell you right now. That's something I can do, closing my eyes, guaranteed." Yeah. <laughs> I think I think the biggest the biggest thing you know the best way to tackle this the best way make vegetables more cheaper than you know the junk food. I agree. I, I agree. More cheaper. Yeah, and I think I think another um, you know um, addition is it's going to help a lot of farmers. You know, it's going to help them boost their, their business because oh, imagine being a farmer and you're toiling during the season of harvest of, of um what do you call it when you're you're planting right planting and then season of harvest. I think that's what you call it. <laughs> I meant I meant planting when they're planting. Yeah. They're toiling. They're sweating. They're in the sun. They're in the rain, and then. Boom, you know, all these big um, restaurants and big takeouts, they just come and buy all their products and they just turn it into junk and into, you know, sandwiches and burgers and stuff like that. And they're like, hmm? so if you're actually making a lot of these raw vegetables cheaper, it's going to encourage them, you know, it's going to boost boost Definitely. the agricultural sector in the, in, in the economy. Yeah, so okay. it's, but taxing. We already have that Look, many this is the problem, in this Laura. country. I'll tell you where this is linked with. This is right now we're making deals with Australia, right? I don't know if you've heard about that. I'm linking this to that whole Australia deal. Right now we're dealing with Australia and our farmers are, you know, are really devastated because our local farmers, right? They're really upset about this because they're telling us right now, Australia, Australia, when it comes to the meat, their standard of meat is not as equal to ours. You know, when we weigh it in, our meat, we, we don't use pesticides, we don't use these chemicals, additives, but they do. And it's cheaper yeah. alternative. And they're afraid that if this meat comes into the UK, right, what's going to happen is this is a cheaper alternative. People will go pick that instead of the meat in our country. And what's going to happen? Farmers are going to lose their jobs. Yep. People will literally have to close shop. And like you said, you know, we have to promote the country. We have to promote, you know, farmers. Farmers are very important. I feel like because, you know, why why would you rather import food? Be because this is the biggest problem. Vegetables, we import a lot of these vegetables as well. So it's because of that. These are very expensive. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, you know, when you're talking about the banning on of uh, meat and all of that stuff, <laughs> that's not even imaginable. I can't even imagine that. Never ever. <laughs> Don't even say that. It's like, it's like your you're, you're, you're trying to ban the healthy stuff. Yeah. But you're opening your doors to the unhealthy stuff. So where where are the priorities? And then now now you come to tell us, oh, you want to tax sugary <laughs> foods. Huh? Well, I mean, bring back our meats. Yeah. Be now and you bring care back our meats. Yeah, well, my, my, now, why do you care all of a sudden? Like, oh, okay. Do you know what I mean? You're, you're trying to ban meat. Meat is, is a healthy choice for a lot of people that are on diets. You know, meat, chicken, fish, a lot of proteins. And then you want to you want to ban it. You want to ban the sausages, which is healthy. But you want to now start taxing on sugary drinks and foods. It doesn't make any sense. Not to me, anyway. It doesn't. I mean, 
I really don't know what the government is looking into. I mean, what they're what what is on their minds? Because look, they just want to tax you. They want to find a good reason. I feel like they just want to find a good reason to tax you. There's they're already like, okay, too many taxes. So many. <laughs> you're working, you get to tax. <laughs> get your road tax, your council tax, your your nah. Laura, I'm telling you, if it is possible to tax you for breathing or opening your eyes or blinking, <laughs> they will tax you. I'm not talking about the UK government in instance. I'm talking about any government. If they can tax you for breathing air, they will do it. They will definitely do it. And See, that I is just... something that will definitely happen. <laughs> I'm just wondering, is this a way of um, kind of getting their money back from all the money they spent <laughs> in the lockdown? Are they trying to no, get their money back? That is a very cheap alternative, though. That Are they trying to get their money back and just and just taxing us? Because I don't get it. <laughs> That's something. I personally don't want to think of that. I don't want to think of that route because then that'll be like, okay, that's really sad for our country people to do something like that. Because I'd like to think that they must have thought already about the different options. And I don't think this is the best option, taxing. No. And yeah, encourage schools um, that feed children to feed them healthy stuff. You can make you can make vegetables nice for kids. You know, yeah. you can you can you can make more fruit salads. Yeah, fruit in, in fruit bowls or something. You can you can make more um I don't know, healthy stuff pretty much for them to eat. You can make more um what was it, homemade wraps and, and shawarmas. I do yeah. some some homemade shawarmas. shawarmas? I, I Did you just say shawarmas? Shawarmas, yeah. I make some pretty good I make some pretty good homemade shawarma, you know. And just I, I prefer to grill. My chicken, yeah. you know, rather than frying a lot and all of that. So for me, it, it helps me control the oil and and all of that stuff. And for like the um, you know, the bread part, I use the wheat rather than the the whole um the white, you know, the I use a less um fatty, you know, substitute. So there yeah, are ways you can do this other than taxing. A lot of people are already struggling financially, and the last thing they need is for you to start billing them. A bit more, you know, and I think they said something about um, have, helping families to spend less on how much they, you know, they spend on on foods, and you know what? Good luck with that because I don't know how that's going to work. I really don't know how our government is looking at this. But then you said what you said there is it's a little disturbing. It's a little disturbing. Is this the way the government is looking to you know make up for the losses that they? <laughs> Oh, we're going to unreasonably tax them because, you know, they're all at home and we give a lot of people these furlough money <laughs> and all of that. <laughs> because, okay, they, they brought out the banning of junk food adverts, right? I was yeah. like, oh, yeah. everyone's grumbled. We don't we don't even know how they're going to reach the target, the target audience, the kids, because they're yeah. all on YouTube and all on Instagram and all that. They hardly watch TV. And now you come and say, oh, probably maybe that won't work, you know. They don't take take us seriously. Let's bring the tax into into play. Boom! Now we're going to be taxing you on sugary foods and drinks. I, I just want to see how these companies are going to react. You know, these big brands that make all the cereals and all the sugary stuff. I don't think they're going to suffer. I don't really think they're going to suffer. I mean, look, if if a burger is going to let's okay, forget a burger. If a juice is going to cost you a pound, right, with sugar and all of that. Yeah, you know, if we increase it by like let's say another fifty p or something. The juice will just go to a one fifty. That's it. They're like, oh, we're gonna have people anyway. Gonna buy. If they're taxing, they're saying they want to tax um, sugary foods and drinks. I'm sorry, I don't think it's going to. I think it's going to be a bit more than fifty p. <laughs> of course, if they're, of course. If they're going to be serious about this, because I mean, of course, fifty p. I was being hypothetical. Gonna, <laughs> it's, it's not going to do jack. <laughs> so. I, I think there probably is going to be a bit more, um, and uh, let, let's just say that they w they shouldn't be surprised when a lot of people start writing petitions, you know, for them to throw that out the window or start protesting or something like that. <laughs> listen, Laura, listen, what they're trying to do right now, you know, they are they're saying. They're, I, I love how the government is coming up for ways, reasons why they're doing it. Like for one, they're saying, "Oh, it's global warming. We want to hit that target in the next, uh, you know, once it's 2050. So by 2030, yeah. at least, you know, if we get get the people to reduce their meat consumption, I quote, by 30 percent. 
They want to reduce it at least by 30%. This is what the government wants to do. They are saying that they're setting a target and they're you know, saying that the, the nation's meat consumption should be 30% over the next 10, 10 years. 30%. Um, Do you hear that? Yeah. I know. I know. It, it, it gets, I, for me, it's frustrating. I mean, why are you touching the food? I mean, look, you include... Yeah, like, don't touch my food. Yeah, like you increase the fuel price. I understand. You increase the fuel price. I'll understand that. You know, I mean, okay, that's something I mean, else. We won't really understand, but I mean, we we'll say okay, you know, but whatever. But food. Go on. Why are you increasing the food? On, uh, you, you know, you know what, you know what they, you know what they've said though. Sorry to cut you there, yeah. Nick. But now they yeah. said that um, this plan, right, if implemented in full, let me quote now could save 38 calories per person per day, <laughs> helping no, the average please. person lose 2 kg in weight a year. So in 365 days, you want me to just lose 2 kg? I mean, I'm not saying it's not a bad idea, but how effective is this going to be? 38 calories in a whole year. I think it's better if you buy everyone a tread machine. That it would be more cheaper alternative. <laughs> if you really want people to lose weight, I mean, cheaper alternatives. That's it. Definitely. Because look, I remember in countries, like in Asian countries, right back in the day, in China, in India, in Sri Lanka, the Maldives, these countries, right? Before, this was before, I'm talking about uh, pre-colonial, uh, you know, the pre-colony times, right. right? So they were at that point where every, in a week, the government decides what food we give you. So that's what, yeah, this was before. This was before. So okay. talking about that history okay. right there, right? The government says, okay, today for, you know, you're going to get for breakfast, you all, everyone's going to get bread today. Today is a Monday, everyone gets bread. And then so, if it's- so they were living off like a timetable. Yeah, something like that. Exactly. That was before. Oh, I can't imagine so, living off a timetable. I couldn't do that to myself. I just, I just rip it. You get, a, you get meat only once a week. These are because I look. I've, I've studied history about you know other countries and stuff, and this was something that they've implemented, like in China, like in India, you know, in, in these Southeast Asian countries, they've yeah. implemented these things. People at a point, so you can see why their people were so. Uh, no offense to people, but you can see many of them were also uh, like you know when you do when you need meat and you don't get enough of meat, you get malnutrition, right? So these are just one yeah. of the problems. So in a way, the UK is blessed. I feel like the UK is blessed in that way right now where we are. We're in that situation where, you know, they want to charge us more because we're eating too much. Um, yeah, I think, but in, in this case, you know, psychologists are saying that if they do this, they're going to cause a, um, what they've termed a double nudge in behavior. So <laughs> it's not going to, it's not going to sit well with a lot of people. And I hope it Nobody's doesn't cause like I'm not some cravings. Happy. Yeah, you know, and I'm I'm starting to think is is the UK starting to sound or look more like North Korea with all these rules and all these um, you know, I, I guess that there has to be law and order in every society, you know, to succeed and and to thrive. Or when you start to take away um some basic, what's it called now, like my yeah, right, yeah. some basic right, yeah, like I sh I should be able to eat what I want. Yes, you can advice me on yeah. oh this is this is not healthy Does it mean uh, your health, <laughs> yeah your, well, your health is at risk and all of that but fine you're saying it's a national emergency um obesity and stuff and then you feel like taxing me is going to do it i'm i'll just get the whole carton i'll just get the whole box of sweets keep in my house i've got the whole lot for the year and you can you can tax the rest like I feel like people will still find a way to go around this no matter oh, definitely. what. Definitely. People will always find a way. I feel like, look, I mean, I can say so many different things, but people will be like, okay, you know, the, the, the government can do this. The government can do that. Like, okay. I'd be like, for instance, I could say, okay, the government could try maybe, you know, maybe producing or importing less of sugar, but people are still not going to be happy about that. And you know, what's going to happen is you're just going to increase the tax. It's not going to yeah. discourage people from, from going and buying it. you got to have your tea in the morning, right? you got to have mm -hmm. your tea. Yeah. Maybe you want to have a pancake or something. It can be anything. Mm -hmm. You're still going to need it, right? It's not like you're going to stop. Because look, 
this, this, I really don't understand the government strategy on this. I really want to understand. I really can't yeah. find a way out there. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I really It's, do not know. You know, where, where I come from, there's this saying that you can force the horse to the riverbank, but you can't force the horse to drink. You know, you cannot, you cannot force people to not take sugary stuff. You can take it away from them and they will still they will still find a way to do it. They will find a way to go around it. You yeah. know, and, and if, if you're not careful, people start bringing their own stuff. Oh, <laughs> that is even, that's even bad for the government. That's what I'm saying. So now that you've got it here, like just encourage in other ways, like, I don't know, make conferences, seminars, you know, um, online talk shows or something. Let people come and True. understand. You know, yeah, it's I think, yeah. I think the idea of talking to their GPs is it's good because if someone goes to their GP, the GP can say, okay, fine, your blood sugar is really high, dangerously high. We advise that you cut down on it. If someone knows that their often, life, this is the thing, Laura. But how often do you go to your GP though? What are the people who don't go to GPs usually? What do they do? Maybe once a year or twice a year. Well, that that's where there's a problem. That is so the GP is not going to knock on their door to say, "Yeah, it's not." We've missed an appointment for the past five years. Come to my office now. <laughs> you know, I mean, obviously, we can't afford these personal people who come and motivate you to eat healthy. Obviously, you know, you got <laughs> that's something else that would work. That would definitely work. Let's say if I was your personal trainer, right, and I told you, Laura, listen, you are not going to touch that meat. Do you like this? Do you like that? I make you feel bad about eating that meat, and you're not going to eat it. But you need yeah. that constant. But these are things. These are more, more than extrinsic. It has to be intrinsic. It has to be more internal. You want to yeah. be able to be healthy. You want to be healthy. Exactly. exactly. That's healthy. what I'm saying. It's like they people have to want it. People have to understand that this is something that is is bad for my health. I need to stop. Definitely. Or I, I'm not going to you know live for very long. That's true. You can't. You just you just can't force people taxing. I don't think that's a good idea. I mean, people will have many kinds of arguments. They'll tell you, okay, you increase the tax, and they're saying, why are you still eating like that? I'm mean, like, yo, any day is could be my last day on earth. So I want to enjoy it how I want to. So I really don't. I, I know you're looking and you're scoffing. You might be rolling your eyes, but this is these are the arguments that people will come up with. People will tell us this. Well, I think what, what a wrong. lot of people what a lot of people will still say is it's my money. I work yeah. hard for my money, so true. I should be allowed to eat whatever I want with my money. I, true. <laughs> Laura, you imagine yeah. someone knocking on your door and telling you, listen, you're not going to eat sugar. I'm going to increase the tax. How would you feel? I'd probably just slam the door in their faces. <laughs> That's the first thing. <laughs> right? And be like, uh, who are you? I'm from the government. I didn't vote for that government. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, these are the truths, right? Come on, let's be honest about this. this. I really, I'm telling you, the day the government starts touching your food is the day they're trying to mess with your freedom. <laughs> that is mm. what I'd like to believe. Because food, it's it's always about food. Food is our most fundamental right. Food and water. These are the yeah. two things that every person needs. And for yeah, you to absolutely. come and... Okay, okay, forget about that. Okay, forget about... Uh, okay, let's say the government is looking for the people's, you know, uh, looking for the people's health, right? We're trying to take care of the people. Fine. Let's say, okay, there are obese people. We want to cut down on that. So what about the healthy people? Why do they have to struggle with that? Why do they suffer with that tax as well? Aren't they going to suffer from that? It's just like saying, because um, my, my diet, right, maybe if yeah. I have really done so well, I've stayed without sugar for two weeks, three weeks, and I just want to have one cheat day. It doesn't mean I'm not going to eat sugar for the rest of my life, right? But then if that day I want to have a cheat day, you come and tell me that you're going to tax me. Like, <laughs> <laughs> can I please have my food now? <laughs> um, yeah. I don't think they can. I don't think. I think this is just a kind of facade. I, I, if I'm being honest, I feel like this is kind of a facade. They're, they're, like you said, I really go back to the point of what you said. It really, really hit me. Maybe the government is. I mean, it might sound like a conspiracy theory, but maybe what if the government is trying to earn back the money they lost? And this is just one of the ways they've implemented. I feel like this could be a legit thing. I don't know. I'm not accusing the government, <laughs> but this is my It's, feeling. Yeah. I don't know really what's going through their heads. and uh, But I do know that obesity especially childhood obesity is a big concern in the country. Um, I would say this, it's a good initiative trying to tackle it, but the yeah. methods that they're going about might not be the best. 
Um, although there, right now, research is saying that poor diets, you know, contribute to six to four thousand deaths um, in England alone, and cost the economy seventy-four billion pounds. So now they're saying that we spend so much money on food. Uh, this is. I don't know what else that we spend money on, but food is like, how am I supposed to survive? I look, Laura. I'm gonna sound like a conspiracy theorist here. Don't judge me. Don't pin this on me. But I'll be honest. Okay. You know what? Never mind. I don't even want to spark something. Oh, like say it. Well, okay. Be real. Here. Come on. Okay. Being real. Being real. If everyone in the UK was healthy, what will happen to doctors? What will happen to these big pharmacy companies? Will they not lose on this? Well. I'm telling you, this is just a ploy. I feel like this is a little bit of a ploy. I don't know. I feel for me, because I, I would never talk about anything else, but when it comes to food, I'm really sensitive about it because <laughs> this is what we eat. This is yeah. what we need. Um, like, first of all, people, like everyone who listens in, they need food. We need yeah. food. Food. You don't Absolutely. mess with our food. Absolutely. Um, that, that's why the world is not perfect. That's why everyone can have six packs or abs or you know, buff arms and look I like um, sad there, um, but okay. <laughs> look like you, Jackman, or or who can I use? Of course. Chris Hemsworth. That's my celebrity <laughs> crush, by the way. You know, oh. so that's why we can't, we can't all look like that. Um, <laughs> is it so the accent we, or is it the six pack? <laughs> <laughs> so for your question, yes. definitely these companies, these um, restaurants and fast food. That's why they're there to keep yeah. feeding people who love to eat junk. You know, so I feel like if they can incorporate more healthy stuff, healthier stuff, I don't know about ice creams because a lot of people love ice cream like me. Um, but I haven't had ice cream for so long. So I don't know how else you can make ice cream healthier. Like, don't put spinach in my ice cream. Don't do that. Like, we're going to have a I'll war. stop ice cream altogether. <laughs> that happens. You know, but I'm, I'm guessing there are other ways they can go around it. Not for ice cream, though. No, don't ever talk about I feel ice cream. like... I feel like, stuff. you know, for the people who need it the most, people who are shying away, like, you know, they're saying, okay, we want, we want to tackle obesity. You want to tackle obesity? Okay, fine. You have counseling. You you provide counseling for these people. Help them. You know, tell them, okay, what, what is the reason? Why are they overeating? What is the problem? Find out the root cause and then solve it from there. I feel like that's a cheaper alternative than this. Than yeah, and... Them. Yeah, and know. also like like I said before, um, they need to really try to penetrate through the schools. True, because schools are really um, the that's really where the kids eat. You know, they, yeah, they eat. They may not even eat at home because maybe you're in a hurry to go to school or whatever. They can just have like cereal or they can have like a toast um, and just head to school. But in school is where they eat all that stuff. And after True. school, you know, if if, if parent if teachers can have a parent teacher association meeting or whatever PTA, you know, with the parents, talk to them about the concern about you know um, th their children being obese. Now find out which of the children in that class are obese, and call out true. their parents, not in front of their children, because you don't want to give these kids. Um, a sense of insecurity or, um, you know, dampen their self-confidence. But bring out these parents, like, call them to order in one room and talk to them. We're, we're really concerned about your daughter or your son's weight. Um, and we just want to know what they eat at home, you know, what they eat at school, all that stuff. And then kind of try to narrow it down, you know. But then if you're talking about adult um, obesity, that's a whole other ball game because... We are adults. We'll do whatever we want, and nobody can tell us nothing. But for children, you can still guide them, and you know so. that's the truth. Because look, literally, there's a review by the there's a there's been a review, okay, by the national uh, report rather done by uh, scientists at the National Food Strategy. Right? It says that calorie for calorie, highly processed foods are three times cheaper than healthy food. There, there. I mean, there. It's in that statement. Literally, it's in that statement. Definitely. And you know, so it's funny because it's funny because these these vegetables. I mean, you you've seen a, ba a bag of spinach. What? what it's literally just spinach and the the casing, right? The covering. Yeah. That's just that's it. And there's usually nothing fancy in the covering. Yeah. But if you look at a biscuit or a cookie um, roll. 
you see all sorts of designs, all sorts of cartoon characters, and sort of yeah. <laughs> printouts. So, like, it's, there's a lot of that. Attractive. Yeah. On a box of uh, bag of spinach, just baby spinach or just spinach. That's it. Very plain and boring. But in a in a bag of ro cookie roll, so many, so many, you know, you can tell that they spent a lot of money designing that that um casing or that wrap round the cookies. And then when you open it, usually it's a fancy tray or something where the cookies are slot, you know, slotted in. Yeah. You, you can tell that they spent a lot of money. So how come that is cheaper than the boring <laughs> bag of spinach that yeah. is, has no design whatsoever? I so know. there's really something, there's something going on here. I think, I think, okay, before we end the show, I think what I really think is they got to make vegetables more tastier and they have to make, and cheaper. They have to make it and cheaper. And then I think people will, there will be an incentive. You, me, will definitely want to eat vegetable. I'll be like, hey, that vegetable tastes kind of good. You know, I want to have, Absolutely. I've never heard anybody said, oh, that salad was rocking. <laughs> I love that salad over that burger. Nobody, I've never heard, even vegetarian, they, <laughs> maybe a vegetarian might. <laughs> They're like, oh, that beans taste better than that celery. But let's be honest, I've never heard a normal, per <laughs> a normal person, I know that sounds wrong, but I've never heard an, uh, a person, you know, who eats meat as well, tell you, yeah. okay, I love that vegetable in comparison to the burger or fried chicken. Oh, yeah, yeah. Never, never, ever. So it's, it's usually I mean, unless you, you incorporate it in, you know, in a meal. You can't just you can't exactly get a, a bag of spinach and just start chewing it. You're not you're not a good. <laughs> you know you won't just do that. But when you when you make it in a meal, it's gonna be oh I actually didn't know you could put spinach in this. Oh it tastes really nice. And then you see the kids loving spinach. It's like oh mommy make that thing you made for us the other day with the spinach with the lettuce with the cabbage. You know and then they will start liking it. Definitely. You know but then when. <laughs> It's just I, one <laughs> vegetable I've never tried, and I'm not really psyched about trying is asparagus. I don't know how it tastes. It's very expensive. It is I, very. You gotta be you see, rich. You see, buy buy yeah. asparagus. I don't know how I've much. Never it eaten costs. asparagus. I always eaten. walk past every time I see asparagus. <laughs> <laughs> I think I watch it in a cartoon a when I was major. younger. <laughs> I I watch it in a cartoon. I think it's kid, Kids Next Door or something. Oh, that cartoon. That. <laughs> and then the asparagus was like was a sea of asparagus, and they hated the asparagus. So ever since, I hated asparagus. It just messed with my mind. So <laughs> I will try it though. I will try. I will see. I'm going to make a conscious effort now to really compare prices. You know, health Definitely. stuff and junk, and they need to do something about the prices. It's ridiculous. But on that note, though, on this weekend, I finally just, I finally know what I want now for this weekend. I'm going to have a barbecue. <laughs> I'm, gonna well, have I'm a having barbecue. barbecue next week. Hey, let's do this. Definitely. <laughs> let's have a barbecue and let, let's review each other's barbecue. <laughs> ah, <that'd be> <laughs> anyways, anyways, it is about the time of the day that we wrap things up right here. But hey, you can catch us again on a Monday, you know, where it's going to be me and Laura rocking it all the way until 6 p.m., you know, where we're going to be talking about all the things that is going on. So make sure you guys keep it locked. And with that, my name is Nick. And I'm Laura. And we are, and we out, of are here. out of here. Hey, you got it.